Okay, so now we're going to start looking at the uh, descending tracks. Descending tracks. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the main one, which is the uh, corticospinal tract. Um, corticospinal tract um, is primarily uh, dealing with uh, fine, skilled movement. Um, it can also uh, help in, um, you know, skill and agility. So this is the uh, very, very precise um, one here. So let's just draw out the uh, brain and uh, CNS real quick. So we have the lobes of the brain. We have the midbrain, pons medulla and then finally the spinal cord so we're going to chase we're going to trace down um, the various things so first of all um, what we're going to be looking at is going to be the uh, pyramidal cells um, these pyramidal cells are going to be located on the fifth layer of the uh, cerebral cortex um, these pyramidal cells one third come from the primary motor cortex primary motor this one third come from the secondary and then one third comes from actually the post central gyrus which is more for uh, sensory but they do um, they do have an effect here so um, let's go ahead and draw out so these are going to be the pyramidal cells which are located in the uh, fifth layer of the cerebral cortex and they just all kind of go around here. So, and um, we have the homunculus as well. So, um, the things related to the legs are going to be over here. Face is going to be over here. You know, your hands and arms are going to be controlled over here, and your trunk is going to be controlled here. So, uh, you kind of have that general um, outline. Now, right here, we're going to have the uh, the thalamus, the two thalami, with the uh, lateral and third ventricle, and then um, we have the internal capsule, which faces that way, and then you have the internal, the um, lentiform nucleus. So all of the fibers uh, will converge on the posterior limb of the. Uh, internal capsule. So that's the first step there. So if you can just write that out quick. So the first thing is going to be you're going to have the corona radiata which is this over here and it's going to converge um, on the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So from there, it's going to proceed on to the um, midbrain. So the midbrain, if I can just draw it out here, um, okay. So the midbrain looks something like that. So that's just general outlook of the midbrain. In the back we have the two superior colliculi, which is for the eye movement. Then you have the substantia nigra, which is found in the midbrain. And then just real quick, um, we have, and then you have the cerebral aqueduct. And so um, it's divided into three sections. This is a tectum. This is a tegmentum. And this is a crust cerebra. And actually, sorry, the accessory right here. Uh, these I should just erase. Okay. And so that's the substantial negra. So that's the accessory right. So what ends up happening is um, the uh, they come from the internal capsule and they go into the middle three fifths of the accessory uh, right of the midbrain. So it kind of collects right there. So the middle three fifths. So um, 
what you have is um, it's going to go through the middle three fifths of cross cerebri, and this is also known as the um, uh, basis pedunculus of the brain. So, and it's going to pretty much be uh, running uh, anteriorly. And then it's going to go through the palms. Now, uh, a little quick thing about the palms is the palms has um, a lot of gray matter here. And what you have is you have a lot of um, fibers running through to the cerebellum. These fibers are called pontal cerebellar fibers. So what ends up happening is, uh, in order for the um, more cortical spinal tract to go through, it needs to split up and go around it. So what you, what ends up happening is, in the pons, uh, in the pons, you, you've got the track, the tracks break down uh, due to the. Um, uh, transverse pontal cerebral fibers. Um, and then what happens when, is when you get to the medulla, uh, as you see in the medulla, we have some of the ulnar nucleus, this is going to be the pyramid. Um, there you go, kind of forward, okay. Uh, in the medulla, so this is your ulnar nucleus here. Um, and then we have the cerebral appendage, oh, sorry, the fourth ventricle there. Um, it comes back together. So just temporarily goes apart and it comes back together right very anteriorly right at the um, pyramids here. And so then it goes through the pyramids uh, anteriorly. So what you end up happening is it's going to go through uh, medulla oblongata anteriorly at the pyramids. And the reason why it's called a pyramid is because when they come together, they form this pyramidal structure. Now, um, right at the right at the base of the pyramid, 90% um, of them will cross will cross that way, and some of them will stay laterally. So we have um, so at the medulla oblongata spinal junction, 90% cross. 10% stay uncrossed. Now, the 90% that cross, they're going to form the lateral cortical spinal tract. And the ones that stay uncrossed is going to be the anterior cortical spinal tract. And now, uh, just for a quick second, if I can just draw out the um, This is going to go like that. And we have the... Here we go. So the, the, the lateral course of the spinal tract is here. And we it right next to the anterior horn. And the uh, anterior cortical spinal tract is going to be primarily located over there. And so, if I draw that here, Lateral course post spinal tracts will go in this area, and the anterior core post spinal tracts will go in that area, right there. Now, okay, now the um, motor neurons that are found, the motor neurons go from, go out this way in the posterior, sorry, the anterior horn of the gray cells. So these are the motor neurons. So when it comes out of the tract, when these come out of the tracts, um, they can, if they're one of the bed cells, they can go directly or they can go via internuncial cell, either or. And the anterior um, spinal thalamic tract, they will actually go across at the spinal level. 
so um, so the uh, so the anterior cortical spinal uh, crosses at spinal level. Okay, and now so this is a general uh, picture. Now, just before we kind of finish off here, um, there is a lot of branching that occurs. Uh, on its way down, and we just kind of need to cover that real quick. So if we can just draw real quickly, we can just draw out the so. So in general, the fibers will go from the brain uh, to the internal capsule, and go straight down. Kind of, it's going to cross out here. And we have another one on the opposite sides. It goes straight down as well. And it crosses right there. So that's your general look now. Um, in the first branches, uh, oh, initially it'll give branch um, to adjacent. Uh, adjacent one. So first thing it is going to give branches to adjacent cells. And this is going to just basically inhibit their activity so you don't have too much going on here. Now the next one that you'll get is in the uh, lentiform nucleus it does send out some branches out to the lentiform nucleus the basal ganglia so the second branch that you get is going to be the basal ganglia which is going to help uh, in uh, stopping moving and some of the uh, uh, things about the movement uh, the other thing that you're going to have is going to be in the midbrain we have something called a red nucleus so the red nucleus um, kind of helps with a lot of the background stuff so you get uh, some connections going out to the red nucleus um, furthermore you have something called the uh, reticular formation and so you will be giving up fibers to the reticular formation um, and this is just to uh, uh, make you more alert while you're, you know, comp while you're uh, doing something. Then, uh, for balance purposes, we do have a vestibular apparatus here. Um, so this is vestibular. This just maintains balance when you're doing something. And um, finally, in the in the medulla, you have the palm, the the olivary nucleus. So the olivary nucleus which is just going to inform the cerebellum about what the brain is trying to do.